are some differences in the way the decisions are made. And the next set of factors are the organizational factors, okay? So, which are making some differences in uh, how the individuals or how the decisions are made at the organization level. So, one such factor is, uh, the constraint is the performance evaluation. So the managers uh, who are strongly influenced by the criteria on which they are evaluated, because uh, in organizational settings, we cannot make the decisions as... Uh, how we wish to make those decisions uh, according to our own way, because there are already set of criteria that have been established and uh, the managers or whoever making decisions in an organizational context, they have to follow that uh, criteria. Uh, they have to follow that set of standards and evaluate the decision. So the alternative aligns that set of criteria and based on the evaluation only, they can make the decision. That's why, uh, the organization of the, uh, the performance evaluation is made. And then reward system. The organization's reward system uh, influences the decision makers by suggesting which choices have better personal payoff. Okay? The reward system. So according to the reward systems, uh, so in organizations, uh, the rewards are given to a certain set of factors only. If you have uh, participated or we have like uh, completed a degree only, or diploma or additional qualification, additional education or qualification or the professional qualification only, they will award you or they will reward you for the next uh, position. So they will uh, nominate you to the promotion. So in such situation, whatever the decision you make will uh, based on the reward system or whatever the decision you make will, uh, whenever you are making decision, you will have that uh, system in your mind, the reward uh, system in your mind and towards that only you will make the decisions okay then the formal regulation as i already said uh, all but the smallest organization create the rules and policies to program decision and get individual to act in the intended manner so again uh, almost many organization all the organization have created some rules and regulation uh, for their organization so for how to make the decision how to behave so Whatever the decision, so whoever making decision in an organization, they have to fit to that rule. They have to follow that rules and regulation, and then only they can make. And then system impose time constraint. Almost all decision come up with the explicit deadline. So such condition often make it difficult, if not impossible, for managers to gather all the information they might uh, like before making a final choice. So again, the time constraint, the deadlines. So whatever the decision, so almost every decision in an organizational setup, they come up with a time uh, constraint. That means uh, the deadlines, okay? So the deadlines are given uh, for each and every situation. And before the deadline, not before the deadlines, you may have, or the managers might have to make the decisions, whether it is a quotation, whether it is a, a selection of the people, so whatever it is, uh, all for everything, there's a deadline in the organization you can take. So that deadline, how it affects the decision is, uh, if it is, uh, if you have uh, uh, very little time to make the decision, you may not have enough time to collect all the information available to yourself. If you have given many time, uh, a long period of time to make the decision, you might have gone through different sources uh, to collect the information on that uh, decision. And based on that information collected, you will make a decision. But if you have given little time, then uh, you may not be able to collect all the information relevant to the decision. So time constraint or deadline will make it difficult to, uh, to make the decision. And then historical precedence. That means how the previous people have made the decision in the same situation or maybe in the similar situation. So that same or the similar solution would be applied to the future situation or the current situation also. Okay. So that is the historical precedent, how uh, the previous people, how the people who uh, have already worked in the organization have made the decision. So these are some organizational constraints that are affecting how the decisions are made in an organizational constraint. Okay. So the next one is, what about the ethics in decision making? That means, whether the people are considering or whether the people are being ethical whenever they are making decisions. So what is the role played by the ethics in this decision? 
So there are three ethical decision criteria. So the three different criteria are available uh, for the ethical decision. So first ethical yardly yardstick is the utilitarianism. That means uh, making decision solely on the basis of their outcome, ideally to provide the greatest good for the greatest number. So ethical criteria, what is considered as ethic here is under the utilitarianism criteria, what is considered as ethic is whatever the outcome, whatever the option give you the best outcome that is considered as the ethical decision. Okay, so this is almost similar to the rational decision making model. So here the ethical ethics, what is considered as ethic is if a decision, uh, a proposed solution or the proposed alternative use the best outcome that is considered as the ethical one. Okay. So this view dominate the business decision making. So it is consistent with the goals like uh, the efficiency, productivity, the higher profit, because in such situation they are expecting the better outcome, uh, the best outcome. Okay. So another ethical criterion is to make the decision consistent with the fundamental liberties and the privileges. So here, the rights of the people, so fundamental liberties, fundamental rights and the uh, fundamental privileges of the people are considered as the most important thing. And uh, in order to serve those things and in order to protect those fundamental liberties and these uh, uh, privileges, the people are making certain decisions. So there are decisions will be the decisions made by the individual will be governed by these liberties and the privileges. And the third criterion is to impose and enforce the rule fairly and impartially to ensure justice or equitable distribution of the benefit. Here, not the uh, best outcome is considered, but the equitable distribution. Okay, everyone has to have uh, everyone has to receive the equal amount or equal share of a particular thing. That is the most important thing considered. That is what considered as the ethical one. Receiving the best outcome for an individual, for yourself, is not considered as the ethics. So under utilitarianism, whatever the best for yourself is considered as the ethical decision. But under the uh, equitable distribution of the benefit, even you are uh, giving up some benefit because... Uh, you want to protect the other people. You want to give the equal chance or equal uh, benefits to the other people. You are giving up some of the benefit of yourself. However, equitable distribution of the benefit is ensured here. So that is called as the third criteria. So these are the three ethical criteria the people can use when uh, the people have to uh, consider when they are making decisions. Okay, so ethical criteria can govern the decision making of different people in different situations okay so the next thing that we are uh, going to see in this decision making is the uh, creativity how the creativity is related to the decision making okay so although the rational decision making model that we have seen uh, under the three decision making model the first model uh, a rational decision maker also needs the creativity. So rational decision making model, what they are doing is they are receiving the information about the problem, about the alternative and selecting the best alternative from the available one. So even though he is using that uh, model, allowing that model, uh, again, the creativity is needed for a decision maker. That is the ability to produce the novel and useful ideas. So creativity means the new thing, the ability to produce new things and new ideas, that is the creativity. So, again, whenever the decision is made, the creativity is necessary. So, there are different, uh, these are different from what's been done before, but appropriate to the problem uh, presented. Okay, so even the same or similar problem have arisen in the past. Some people may have uh, made the decision in a certain way. But rather than following the same way, you have to make a new solution or new way of following uh, the uh, situation, a uh, new way of dealing the situation, new ideas to solve that situation. That is the creativity. So creative potential, the most people have you useful creative potential. That means uh, the ability to create the new ideas. So uh, the ability to be creative is called as the creative potential. But to unleash it, they have to escape the psychological rules of many of us fail into and learn how to think about the problem in divergent ways. So to be creative, what you have to 
do is you have to think about you have to uh, analyze the problem in different ways you should not stick with the one way of thinking about the problem you have to think about the problem in different way that is what the creative people do okay so there's a model or there's a theory uh, available in uh, relation to this creativity and decision making which is called as uh, the three component model of creativity so what can the individual and the organization to do stimulate the creativity so if uh, we want to suggest or if we want to have the new idea to solve the problem again the individual needs to be creative so what we can do to stimulate the creativity among the individual so the best answer lies in the three component model of creativity so that means this model suggests that how the creativity among the people could be improved okay so what are the uh, things or what are the uh, factors have to be uh, considered and improved if you want to improve the creativity in an individual so the first such factor is the expertise expertise is the foundation for all creative work okay so that is the foundation you have to have the expertise on that particular thing uh, in which you are making decision for the pot potential for creativity is enhanced when the individual have ability knowledge proficiency and similar expertise in the field of endeavor so whether if you are making some decision on finance maybe investment you should have some expertise on this investment you should have some knowledge you should have some ability uh, and proficiency in relation to this investment portfolio of the finance and all then only you can uh, come up with a new solution or new way of making the decision that is the first component the second component is the creative thinking skill okay so creative thinking skill so this means uh, the personality characteristics so associated with the creativity so some people uh, may like uh, they have really a uh, high level of creative thinking skills and some people uh, some personality character that some uh, the characteristics or the people with some personality characteristics may have uh, low uh, creative thinking skills but they have to improve those things Uh, the ability to use the analogies and the talent to use the family in a different way those are the uh, things that we can uh, do to improve the creative thinking skill and the final component of uh, this uh, three component creativity model is the intrinsic task motivation so that is the desire to work on something because it's interesting involving exciting satisfying and personally challenging so some people they want to do something they want to engage in certain activity because those activity is interesting because uh, they are not uh, they don't want to actually uh, engage in such kind of activity but why they are engaging in such is because that is interesting it's really challenging it's not uh, really easy to do or complete that particular task i want to accept that challenge and i want to complete that that is uh, their motivation so that is the intrinsic motivation so because of these three things by improving these three things we can improve the creativity among the people okay so this is all about this chapter the perception and decision making anything to ask any question any questions any clarification is everything clear is everything clear yes ma'am okay so what are the three different models of decision making three different models of making decisions
Anyone? Form 36, are you here? Form 36. Form 36, are you here? What are the three different models of making decisions? Anyone? First is rational decision making model. Other two? What are the other two ways of making decisions? Bounded rationality, okay. The third one? One. One more. Intuitive decision making or the intuition. Okay. So, what are some uh, errors the individuals making when they are making the decisions? What are some errors the individuals commit when they are making decisions? Any, any? Okay, uh, I don't know whether you are clear or not. Uh, if you have any clarification, you are not uh, like responding at all. I don't know whether you have understood or not. Uh, if you have any clarification, please unmute your mic at any time. You can ask the questions. And uh, please uh, study this subject uh, as uh, like uh, we have completed the units because if you keep everything to be studied in the last minute, you will be suffering, I'm sure. Uh, this is uh, like uh, more theory related and uh, more content oriented subject, not like the other ones. Even the practical things, uh, we are giving uh, some concepts or we are naming at, uh, naming those the practical things as the concepts, theories and all. So you will be confused of uh, if you wait until the last moment, please start studying the subject as early as possible. As uh, soon we have completed the subject, so each and every unit we can uh, complete the subject. Okay, so shall we move to the other chapter? I will upload the notes immediately today, so that uh, you can find it easy. Shall we start the next chapter? Anything to ask in this chapter? Shall we start? If it is okay and if you are okay to start the next chapter, please raise your hands. Okay. Uh, since most of you are okay with this, uh, we will start the next chapter, that is the motivation. Okay, so this may be somewhat easier to yourself. You might have studied something in uh, uh, management process and practice, some motivation of concepts and these theories, uh, almost the same uh, applicable here as well, the same theories, some of the theories are almost the same. Some are different, uh, some advanced theories that we will cover here uh, in organizational behavior, but uh, something uh, might be familiar to yourself that you have studied in management process and practice. So the chapter seven is about uh, the motivational concepts. Okay, 
So in this particular chapter, we will be studying about uh, three key elements of this motivation. Uh, identify the early theories of motivation and uh, evaluate their applicability today. Uh, there are some certain theories. Uh, we can like uh, categorize the theories, the uh, motivational theories as early theories and the contemporary theories. So we will see about uh, the early theories of motivation and uh, separately and uh, we will see the contemporary theories of motivation separately. So apply the prediction of uh, self-determination theory, that is a contemporary theory, to intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. One such theory, the self-determination. And then uh, application or the application of employee engagement for management. Compare and contrast. Uh, there are two theories that uh, goal setting theory and the management by objective and uh, contrast the reinforcement theory and this uh, goal setting theory. That is another theory is reinforcement and then demonstrate uh, the organizational justice, something related to the organizational justice and refinement of like uh, equity theory and apply the key tenets of expectancy theory. Okay, so the contemporary, compare all the contemporary theories of motivation. So mainly we will uh, see two sets of theories, early theories on motivation and uh, the contemporary theories on motivation. That is what uh, this chapter is all about. Okay, so all about the theories. So different scholars uh, worked on this management and this organizational behavior. They have developed different theories uh, in relation to this uh, motivation. We will try to cover the theories as much as possible. Okay. So the first thing we will uh, understand what is motivation. Okay. So the term motivation may be familiar to yourself. That is, uh, if you like uh, see that motivating in the sense that is uh, inducing you to perform even better. That is, in simple term, we can say what is motivation. But when we like officially define it, uh, theoretically define it, uh, motivation is defined as the process that accounts for an individual's intensity, direction, and persistence of effort towards attaining a goal. Okay, so here uh, it's a process uh, that accounts for the individual's intensity. There are three different things towards uh, achieving a goal. So every individual or every organization, there will be a goal to be achieved, directing that person uh, and uh, letting that person uh, to continuously pursue that goal and uh, increasing the intensity or how hard, how hardly that particular person work towards achieving that particular goal. That is the motivation. Okay, you have to increase all three things in order to achieve a particular goal. That is what motivation. Okay, so this motivation can come from intrinsic factor within yourself. Our motivation can come from the outside factors, from the external factor. Whatever it is, uh, the person has to be uh, induced or they have to push towards the achievement of the goal. That is the motivation. So the three key elements of a definition uh, or the three key elements of the motivation is the intensity, direction, and the persistence. Okay, so intensity it describes how hard a person tries. Okay, so if you uh, like, if you have uh, the exams uh, in next months, how hard you study, that is the intensity. So the motivation has to given. So motivation means. Uh, that hard work has to be increased by something. That is the motivation. They have to some motivation or something has to be has to be pushed or someone something has to push that person to increase that hard work. How uh, hard the person try towards achieving the goal, like uh, achieving uh, A plus in certain examination. That is the intensity. However, high intensity is likely to lead the favorable job performance outcome unless the effort is channeled in a direction that benefits the organization. So how hard a person tries is the intensity. So even you study hard for an examination to achieve the results, if you are studying uh, the notes, uh, the reference material, which is uh, not given by your lecturer, which is something else, uh, a ebook is suggested by the lecturer and he she or she has given the notes to yourself 
but uh, you are studying something else not the notes given by the lecturer or not the ebook suggested by the lecturer you are studying something else so here your direction is somewhere else so whether you could able to pass the examination with the flying colors whether you could able to get an a plus in the same examination you may not because you are studying something else which which is not needed for the examination so your direction is wrong so here what is needed is the effort has to be the hard work has to be directed towards the goal that uh, you have to study the suggested ebook suggested materials only then only you can uh, get through the examination with a flying colors okay so the direction is the second component third component is the persistence motivation has a persistent dimension that means how long a person can maintain their effort studying uh, Six hours for a day is not enough. You have to put the continuous hour effort until the examination ends. Throughout the one month, you have to put the same level of effort. Studying one day and not studying for ten days is not enough to pass the examination or get through the examination with the flying colors. So you have to continuously try hard. That is the persistence. So if something uh, pushes you to study hard, study the proper thing in the proper direction. and continuously study that is called the motivation okay is that clear whether the motivation the concept of motivation and three components of motivation is clear is that clear okay if it is clear now we will move to the theories of motivation okay as i already said uh, there are two different set of theories the early theories of motivation and uh, the next set of theories are the contemporary theories of motivation early theories uh, which have been formulated during 1950s and later uh, these theories uh, due to some the limitations of this theory the different scholars worked on this area in later stages have developed different theories so we can categorize four theories as the early theories of motivation the first one is the hierarchy of needs theory the uh, abraham maslow's hierarchy of needs theory you might be very much familiar with this theory i don't need to explain much about this theory so that is one of the early theory of motivation the second theory is the theory x and theory y and the third one is two factor theory and uh, the fourth one is the mcclelland's theory of needs okay so these four theories we can categorize as the early theories of motivation so the first one the first early theory is the hierarchy of need theory okay so this is the best known theory of motivation uh, which is uh, introduced by abraham maslow the hierarchy of needs theory so the, almost uh, the first theory developed on this motivation is the hierarchy of needs so maslow what he has said is what he, uh, he has suggested is he has categorized the needs into five different categories as you all uh, know that uh, the first category of the need is the physiological needs that means uh, the hunger uh, the thirst the shelter sex uh, and the other body needs those are called as the physiological needs so that those are the essential needs without those uh, without fulfilling those needs a person could not live okay so that is the first category or first set of needs according to abraham maslow the second set of needs is the safety so security and the protection from physical and the emotional harm okay so you have to, uh, an individual uh, have to secure himself or herself from the Uh, physical and the emotional harm, not only from the physical harm, but also from emotional issues or emotional uh, harm. They have to protect themselves. That is the safety needs. And the third one is the need for affection, belongingness, love, acceptance, friendship. Those are the social needs. So the person is uh, requiring. this kind of uh, belongingness friendship from the other people being loved by other people uh, entering into a relationship those are the social needs and the fourth category of needs is the esteem needs so that is the internal factors such as uh, 
the self respect the autonomy uh, the achievement the external factors like uh, uh, the status recognition by the society the attention uh, from the other people those are the uh, el self esteem needs and the final need is the self actualization needs so that is the try to become what we are capable of becoming including the growth achieving our potential and the self fulfillment okay so that is what we are capable of becoming whether we are uh, capable of achieving our self fulfillment so some people they want to achieve something in their life and that is their self fulfillment so they don't need to like uh, want to live a wealthy life but they need a internal satisfaction so that is the self fulfillment for the individuals achieving the potential the growth potential uh, being uh, at the top level so that is the self actualization okay so these are the five different category of uh, the needs uh, proposed by abraham maslow according to the theory of uh, hierarchy of needs theory okay so we can organize these uh, five different categories into a pyramid like this where the base would be the psychological needs the second layer would be the safety needs third layer would be the social fourth layer is the esteem and the final layer is the self actualization needs okay so here are some examples for each and every category so what we saying that although no need is ever fully gratified the substantially satisfied need no longer motivate so here what he say is if the need is not satisfied fully it will be motivating a person to achieve or to fulfill that particular need okay so even though no any uh, need or no any layer of the need could be fully satisfied if a need is substantially satisfied it will not be motivating a person so if for example if uh, a person is not able to get uh, proper food uh, is suffering for food that will motivate that particular person to uh, earn something to eat a better meal that is motivating that particular person to uh, get a proper meal if a person has a uh, fulfill all the needs in the physiological level like uh, he has a proper shelter uh, proper clothes to wear and a good meal to eat everything is there then that needs or if someone uh, comes and uh, give some food or some uh, clothes will not be motivating that particular person okay so what he wants is the next level of needs okay maybe uh, the social needs okay so the safety needs then only uh, if safety needs are satisfied then the person will be motivated by the social needs if social needs are satisfied then the person will be motivated by self esteem needs and if self esteem needs are satisfied then he will be only motivated by the self actualization if a need is substantially fully uh, satisfied that particular need will be no longer motivating that particular person that is what the theory suggests so thus each becomes substantially satisfied the next one becomes the dominant so when the uh, physiological needs are satisfied then the safety needs would be the most important for that particular person and if someone offers uh, the safety environment the safety uh, place to work or place to be there then the person will be motivated by that particular need so if you want to motivate someone according to maslow you need to understand what level of hierarchy that particular person is currently on and focus on satisfying the needs at or oh, about that level moving up the steps okay so if but uh, according to theory if a particular level of need is satisfied that uh, need will be no longer motivating that person so then we have to focus on the next level of need so if we want to motivate someone according to this theory we have to focus on that particular level or the above level we should not focus on the lower level needs okay so maslow separated the five level into low order and high order needs so physiological and safety needs are considered as the low order needs and the social is uh, self esteem and self actualization needs are considered as the high order needs 
the higher order needs are satisfied internally, that is within the person. So some external factors cannot uh, fulfill uh, the need of these uh, high order, higher level needs. Higher order needs cannot be satisfied with the external factor. So if that needs to be, uh, that particular level of needs uh, to be satisfied, then that can be happened by the internal people that within that particular person only that needs could be satisfied. But lower level needs, uh, they can be satisfied by the external factors or the external things. Okay, this is what suggested by Abraham Maslow. Anything to ask? Any clarification? Are you all clear with Abraham Maslow theory? This is almost I think familiar to yourself. You might have studied this theory from your A levels, uh, the management and the uh, management process and practice. Is that clear? Any, any clarification? Shall we move to the other theory? We can uh, complete one more theory today. Theory X and Y. Shall we continue? Okay, thank you for the response. Okay, so the next theory, the next early theory on motivation is the theory X and uh, theory Y. Okay, so here, uh, this theory, the theory X and Y has been proposed by the Douglas MacGregor. So he views the person or the human being as uh, two separate parts. The one they are labeling the one set of human as theory X and the other set of human as the theory Y. Okay, so this is not theory actually categorizing the human being or categorizing the people under two labels, the theory X and theory Y. So MacGregor concluded that uh, their views of the nature of human being are based on the assumption that mold their behavior. So he is viewing the set of people uh, falling under the label of theory X is the assumption that they are dislike work, they are really lazy, they dislike the responsibility, and they must be forced to perform. So one category of people, they don't want to work, they are really lazy, they don't want to put effort onto the work, and they don't like to take the responsibility of uh, completing the work. And if uh, we want to uh, make them work in the working environment, we have to Force them. That means uh, we have to like uh, uh, force them to perform their task and responsibility. So we cannot go and ask uh, kindly to perform that particular task. If someone uh, forces them, if leader forces them only, they will perform the task. So theory X managers believe employees inherently dislike work and must therefore be directed or even forced into performing it. But other set of people who are falling under the label of uh, theory Y, uh, the assumption about those people are they like to work, they are really creative, and they seek the responsibility and can exercise the self-direction. They, they want to work, and they want to uh, be very much creative in their work. They want to introduce new ideas. They want to introduce new tasks and responsibility. They don't. They want to uh, engage in new responsibility. They are seeking the responsibility. They are not avoiding the responsibility. They are seeking the responsibility. And even they can exercise the self-direction. Even okay, they can self-direct themselves. No one is needed to push themselves to complete the task. They can self-direct themselves, and they themselves can complete the task. So under theory Y. Uh, in contrast to the theory X, the managers assume that employee can view work as being natural as a play. So they view being work, uh, working as a play that uh, they just, uh, they want to work, they like uh, working for an organization and they consider it as a game, okay? And therefore, the average person can learn to accept, even so, seek the responsibility. So MacGregor, him believed that theory Y assumptions were more valid than the theory X. So uh, motivating uh, the people who are falling under the label of theory Y is really easy because they naturally they want to work, they like to work. So we don't need to give uh, pretty much motivation to themselves. Pretty much, we don't need to give uh, very much. Uh, we don't need to spend very much effort on themselves. But theory Y, 
ये रेच पीपल दे रियली डोंट वांट टू वर्क दे आर रियली लेजी सो इफ वी वांट टू मेक देम कंप्लीट द टास्क वी हैव टू एक्सरसाइज सम पोशन सो दे आर फॉर ही प्रपोज द आइडिया लाइक पार्टिसिपेटिव डिसीजन मेकिंग रेस्पॉन्सिबल एंड चैलेंजिंग जॉब एंड गुड ग्रुप रिलेशन टू मैक्सिमाइज द एम्प्लॉई मोटिवेशन सो व्हाट वी कैन say uh, what we can do to improve the motivation of theory why people because they are naturally wants to work uh, we can engage them in the decision making we can let them to participate in the decision making and uh, assign them some uh, challenging job roles rather than the traditional job role we can assign them some challenging job role and uh, we can create a better relationship among these people so through this way we can motivate the people but if we want to motivate the theory x people the only way is to uh, force them to work towards their task okay so this is the theory x and y suggested by uh, douglas macrag anything to ask any clarification is that clear theory x and y the early theories on motivation are really like uh, simple to understand the contemporary theory is a little bit complicated than these uh, early theories is that clear early theory yes ma'am okay okay so i hope everyone has the same opinion if you have anything to ask any clarification you can unmute your mic and ask otherwise uh, we can wind up the class thank you and we will see the other theories of motivation in the next class and again uh, on wednesday i don't know whether i could able to take the lectures at 10:30 however i will uh, communicate to your rep and uh, uh, reschedule the lectures at uh, some other time on wednesday okay thank you ma'am yeah thank, thank you, you. Thank you.